Chew and pour. Pass and forget. When I talk to Ghanaian students about their science schooling, that's the phrase they choose to describe it to me with. They are fed information, they spit it back up at the exams, and then they move on with their life. When I visit cl science classrooms, I see this as well. Science feels limited to writing on the blackboard, sending facts to students, which they are asked to chant back. This is a problem because as the World Bank released in a study this year, engineering is, and science are directly related to a country's GDP. These two are positively correlated. The countries that have high GDPs also have strong skill base of scientists and engineers. If Ghana wants to move up this chart, we need more scientists and engineers here. This is not a new idea. Kwame Nkrumah himself was a strong advocate for sciences, saying that they are fundamental to the development of Ghana. So as I think about this challenge, two questions come to my mind. The first question is, what is science? Is it that subject you're supposed to study in school? Is it what you have to do to become a doctor? What is science really? And secondly, once we figure out what science is, how do we teach it well? How do we teach it in a way that engages students and encourages them to take it up in the future? Let me first tell you a little bit about my story. I grew up in a small town in the middle of the US. You might consider it like the village here, I suppose. Life is slow, people are friendly, the education system has challenges. My state continues to rank nearly at the bottom of the 50 states in the US in terms of education. So needless to say, going to school wasn't really something I was jumping at every day. One thing I did enjoy, though, as I was growing up, was being outside, exploring nature. I got to go on a lot of work trips with my dad, who was an aquatic biologist, and I got to go play in the rivers and the ponds, stomp around, and turn over rocks to see what kinds of animals I could find. And to me, that's what science is all about. It's that childlike curiosity, that desire to discover and explore the world around us. In fact, I would say that science is simply whatever process we use to look at the physical world and make meaning out of it, to build our understanding of how the physical world works. So if that is what science is, then why do we always feel like science has to happen in a place that looks exactly like this? In a pristine laboratory with glassware and tubing and specific chemicals. If science is about making understanding of the world, why don't we just use the world itself? Why don't we use the world as our laboratory? I'd like to show you a couple of examples of what I mean. Take a look here. I have a Voltic bottle with the bottom cut off and a Polyton bag around the bottom. Take a close look at the balloon as I pull this Polyton bag out and push it back in. Out and in. Out and in. So you should see that as I pull the bag out, the balloon expands. And as I push it back in, the balloon deflates. This is meant to be a model of the human respiratory system. This balloon is our lung, if we had one lung. And the polyton bag is this thing we try to teach students about called the diaphragm. So through this model, you can very easily see that the diaphragm's motion enables air to enter our lungs and again to exit our lungs. And this is an amazing physical process. We do this more than 20,000 times a day and we don't even think about it. There's so much beauty in the world to uncover if we just have the right tools to help us see it. Here's another one, acids and bases. I'm sure it's a topic we all studied in junior high school science class. What if rather than writing on the board, here's how hydrogen ions move from this place to that place, what if we just use some real acids and bases from our environment? I have in this bottle some vinegar, and I have in this balloon some baking soda. 
what you would use if you were going to bake a cake. So watch as I put this balloon on the bottle and as I pour the contents in. The balloon is expanding, right? And you might be able to see there's a lot of bubbling and fizzing happening inside the container. So this is what we call an acid-base reaction. And in this case, a gas is produced, carbon dioxide specifically. So if you were to show this to your students in class, I guarantee you they would all remember that a gas is produced from this reaction because they've seen it with their own eyes. These are two examples of ways that we can use simple materials in our environment to teach science, bring it to life. In fact, I say that teaching science is coco, it's simple, it's straightforward, it's easy. Let's make teaching science something that makes meaning for our students. That's the mission that I'm on, along with my team, a couple of whom are shown here. We have been moving around Ghana for the last two years, running trainings for science teachers, sharing ideas for ways teachers can do activities just like this to bring the syllabus topics to life. Teachers are at the heart of what we do. We believe that they are the ones that will sustain a change in the way that science is taught and learned in the classroom. I'd like to show you a few examples of what teachers are up to. Here's Gilbert from Tema. He, rather than teaching about soil and biology by writing on the board, he just goes outside of his school, gets some soil, and has his students interact with it. And you can see the joy that's on their face as they get to actually see science in real life. We have Charlotte from Adenta. She is using bottle tops to represent chemical elements. So when she wants to teach her students how to balance chemical reactions, she has them manipulate the bottle top elements. And then there's Selassie in Ponkatamansu district. She has been diligently gathering her whole set of science materials from her local environment, and in fact has a whole ice chest full of them now. And you can see her class is really benefiting from this. Her students, she groups them. This picture shows a class of hers. This is not break time, this is the science class. She has groups of students, each of them doing a different practical activity after 10 minutes where they get a feel of it, they get to move on to the next station and continue. Let me also mention this boy, William Komkwamba. He's from Malawi, and when he was 15 years old, he realized that there was a severe energy crisis in his village. His house never had light. So he decided, I'm gonna make my own windmill. And he improvised with local materials to make that happen. He did this without any science teacher telling him what to do. So imagine what he could have created if he had a science teacher building on his potential. The good news is that Almost every Ghanaian child I've ever met has built a toy car out of scrap materials. So there's an innate curiosity and creativity in the Ghanaian child, I'm sure. Let's unlock their potential through science so that they can build and create bigger and better things. What if this Ghanaian child could do what Kelvin Doe did? When he was a teenager in Sierra Leone, he built his own radio station. And again, when there was an energy crisis in his village and his radio station got cut off, he said, no, I need to build my own generator so that I can have my radio station back online. And he did just that. So imagine if those Ghanaian children building toy cars just had a little bit of electronics expertise. It's in the syllabus. Could they all build their own generators? What would the energy crisis in Ghana look like then? Let me end by saying that I hope and I'm working towards seeing science teaching and learning change from chew and pour to drink and enjoy. I think science is cocoa. We should take it in, we should enjoy it, we should use it. <laughs>